Today, the most vicious enemy any of us attack with a razor-sharp blade might be a common vegetable. But there's no need to carry a 20-plus inch katana blade into the kitchen. Cutco Cutlery of Olean, New York, claims to create the sharpest kitchen knives in the world. It all starts with a steel alloy containing chromium. For the perfect balance of strength, edge retention, and corrosion resistance, the metal will undergo a high-tech heat treatment. We got the finest steel, but if we don't go through a proper heat treating process, we've wasted all our money. This is just show you here, this is not heat treated. So here's what we would have if we would not heat treat this blade. It would bend in your home, it would not hold an edge. In the first step of the brutal three-part heat treat process, a conveyor feeds newly stamped unsharpened blank blades to a furnace. Now we're going to put it in a deep freezer and freeze it to 120 degrees below zero for about two hours at temperature and pull it out. After these two steps, the cold steel blades are far from finished. What we would have now is a brittle part. And what you see here on the table is that here's some parts that have been heat treated and frozen, but they're very brittle. If I put this in, you can see here that it broke very easily. To overcome this problem, another furnace warms the steel again. And that will give us a tough part, very much of what we see right here in these knives that have been ground and finished, but you can see how they'll flex. Now that each blank has just the right steel consistency, it's time to grind the edges. Each blank now 95 thousandths of an inch thick, passes through an automatic grinder, which tapers its edge to just 18 thousandths of an inch. This is about five times as thick as a sheet of paper. But we've only gotten started. Now here comes the process that'll turn these edges into the world's sharpest. Operators manually press each blade, one side at a time along a powered four inch wide moving conveyor belt with a consistency not unlike sandpaper. In seconds, a barely visible light line appears on the rim. This is called the burr. Need a better look? The honing process grinds down the metal until the two faces meet each other at the edge. Once they do, one side of the metal curls over the other and produces the burr, which is a thin, nearly microscopic wire. It's just a floppy piece of thread like hanging on the edge, and actually it bends back and forth, so you need to take it off so you get down to the strength of the edge. If the burr were not removed, the knife would act more like a saw. Polishing erases the burr. If you use a cloth buff, much as you'd use if you were I'm polishing your car with a with an automatic buffer. The wheels are turning 3,600 RPM. So when they're turning, they're hard as a rock. What we're actually doing is polishing the edge, which actually buffs away the burr and makes it very smooth, so the edge actually glides through the food that is cutting. Heated, ground, sharpened, and deburred. The cutting edge now measures a super thin one ten thousandth of an inch. 20 times thinner than a human hair. But this minute edge isn't the only measure of a sharp and effective kitchen knife. It must also keep its edge for as long as possible. What good is a knife if it can only slice well through its first pineapple? To prove its knives are superior to other brands, Cutco conducts a Catra test, an industry standard. The test simulates wear on the blade by forcing it through thin cardboard strips filled with fine granules of sand. The test will measure not only the effectiveness of its first slice, but also of its 60th. One of the important factors that the cutlery industry wants is how sharp is this knife going to be when you buy it? And, of course, the longevity. How long is that knife going to last? For some perspective, a butter knife takes the stage first. It doesn't exactly make the cut. Actually, uh, 
It's supposed to be doing some cutting through on the test media. About all it will do is probably cut butter. It's not going to get through maybe one of our test media after 60 times. Repeated tests help back up Cutco's claim that it's the sharpest knife you can find in a kitchen drawer. Out of package sharpness will give us an average of approximately 30 cuts. Total card cut after 60 times gives us approximately 400 cuts of this test media. Over time, however, even what's billed as the world's sharpest kitchen knife inevitably dulls. But the food it's cutting isn't necessarily the reason. It's other things that the knife comes in contact with those the dulling. China plates or glass cutting boards or very hard other surfaces. To combat the dulling effect, Cutco manufactures a blade with an unusual edge. They call the double D. Protruding points line the lower lip of the blade and protect the sharp cutting surfaces, which hide in upper U-shaped recesses. What's going on here is the points are what's touching the glass plate. So what's being dulled are the points, not the upper parts of the edge. 